same continent, different country. This is in Cameroon. Uh, Izzy has been there. Anyone else been to Ape Action Africa? An amazing, amazing sanctuary. Um, this was a pretty incredible story. Uh, I'll introduce you to, okay, this is Khan Daniel. He's a juvenile gorilla. He ended up being the, um, is he the dominant male? Oh, okay. But what's the name for the dominant male? The silverback. Silverback. He became the silverback. Uh, okay, so I want to introduce you to Rachel Hogan. Uh, 12 years ago, I shot this two years ago. So 12 years ago, she was a young woman from the UK. She went to Cameroon to volunteer for three months. <laughs> three months became six months, became a year. And during that time, she saw that it wasn't a great sanctuary. It needed a lot of help. And she had taken in all of these gorillas, all of these gorillas who had been, um, their parents had been poached or they'd been used in entertainment. And she had all these babies. And they had a, a not very good enclosure. It was too close to the village. So they were getting sicknesses from, from they were getting human illnesses because it was too close to the village. So she made a promise to these gorillas that she would not rest until they had a proper sanctuary home. Um, they can't be released into the wild because they're habituated and because they'd be poached again. So she wanted to, to do the best that she possibly could for these guys. So the story is called Rachel's Promise. And this is shot the day before they were going to their new space. This is the enclosure near, um, near the town. It's not bad, but um, she did so much more for them. So she raised them. And you can't do this with gorillas, as you know. <laughs> but um, she did raise them. And she's like mom. So that's why she's having this kind of playtime with them. And she was trying to maximize her playtime as well, because she didn't know if they would go off into this new space and not come back and not spend time with her again. So she really had a, a happy heart, but a heavy heart as well. <laughs> This is Shay. He's way too big to be on her back, and I love that he's holding her boob. <laughs> Aw, <Aww>, mom. <laughs> so the next morning, it's time to sedate each animal one by one. Rachel's really, really nervous. And uh, they brought them, they brought each one into the, uh, the vet clinic, and uh, uh, fixed up some of their teeth if that needed to happen. These are all juvenile gorillas, by the way, so under under eight years old or so. Um, did their blood work and just checked to make sure they were healthy before they went to the new spot. And then from here, we put them in the truck and go down to the new spot. But someone woke up early. <laughs> someone woke up early, and all of a sudden, I was in mortal danger. <laughs> luckily, luckily. Um, her name's her name's Pickin. She's uh, she's about five years old, I believe, four to six years old in this picture. She was still really groggy, and she was in the arms of her beloved friend Apollinaire, who's from Chad, and he's the head gorilla keeper there. So she didn't freak out, and she went back to sleep against his chest. Aww. Yay! <laughs> so on our way to the new spot. And Rachel was with each gorilla as they woke up because she knew they'd be really nervous and she wanted to reassure them with her presence that everything was OK. They stayed in the, um, in the main enclosure, so it's a caged in area for two days just to you know, recover and get used to the new space. They knew the like, exciting things were happening. And she was really excited. She, she camped out there for two days in a tent. She wouldn't leave their side. Then came the morning where it was time to open the doors to the new sanctuary space. And she didn't know if they would even go outside, because they might be too terrified. And um, anyway, this is what happened. She slid open the gate, and they all went running out. And they waited for each one to come out. And they hugged each other, and they did their, their low grunting that is just so beautiful. And they went running. <laughs> they went running out into the forest. This is a huge, this is like hundreds of acres of space for them. She didn't want them to ever be in a cage again. So that's why there's the electrical wiring. And, um, and they went. And uh, she cried her face off. <laughs> and in this moment, she said, OK, God, you can take me now. I'll die happy. <laughs> it was really sweet. I just want to. Um, introduce you to a few more wonderful chimps that I've met. This is at Save the Chimps uh, Sanctuary in Florida. Her name is Mandy. 
She was uh, used in research uh, for probably over 40 years, kept in a small cage at the Colston Foundation in um, Alamogordo, New Mexico. Mandy was, had just been moved from the research center to the sanctuary, and um, they didn't have files on her far enough back to know if she had been wild caught or if she had been bred and, and raised in the lab. But you can always tell which chimpanzees were caught in the wild because when they get to the sanctuary, they go. They go out into the greenery and they enjoy it right away. The ones who were born in the lab, they often just stay on the cement and they, it takes them weeks to build up the courage to go outside. So Mandy, they didn't know. They opened the door and she went out and she ran down into the reeds. And this is her sitting in the reeds and she's enjoying the wind on her face and she was touching everything. Pepsi is his name. And he's not only special because of those really rare golden eyes that he has, but he's also funny and special because he has a foot fetish. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were walking around. <laughs> And um, when we passed him by, he came over to the side and he started uh, pant hooting at me and pointing at my feet. And one of the staff said, oh, he's got a foot fetish. Just show him your feet. Take your sandals off. He's been in a cage for 30 years. The least you can do is show him your feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Anything for Pepsi. <laughs> um, this, this image, I don't know. It's actually not like a super special image. It's, um, but it, it is because of the story behind it. This is also at Save the Chimps. And what's really awesome about this picture is that um, it's the hand of Dr. Carol Noon, who's the one who rescued uh, all of these chimps and founded Save the Chimps. And that's her hand. She hated being photographed, but that was okay with her. Not only because it was just her hand, but because it's the chimp that's outside and she's in a cage. Animals Asia Foundation, they've been in the news quite a bit lately um, because they were um, going to be evicted from this sanctuary, but we found out today, actually, that they can keep this land in Vietnam, so it's really, really great. Big victory. Uh, Animals Asia Foundation rescues mainly bears, uh, <laughs> moon bears and sun bears. So uh, why, do, why do bears need rescuing? Um, do you guys you pr probably know about the bear bile? trade, bear bile farming. So these bears, by the tens of thousands in Southeast Asia, are kept in cages like this and smaller. Um, their gallbladders are tapped once a month usually, uh, and the gallbladder bile is extracted. It's used in traditional Chinese medicines, from like you know curing hemorrhoids to halitosis to erectile dysfunction. They just wear by it for a lot of things. Um, it, I should note that it is useful to remedy certain things, so that's true. However, they have found, I think, 50 different ways to replicate this synthetically. So there's absolutely no need to use bear bile ever again. Um, a lot of traditionalists are holding on to it, but I think things, well, I don't think things are really changing. Uh, younger doctors and people who want to be innovative are no longer using or prescribing uh, bear bile. So things are changing. And in the meantime, there are tens of thousands of bears that need to get out of these cages and into sanctuaries. That's what Animals Asia is doing. Uh, miracle. First time I went to, uh, to Vietnam to photograph their work, uh, I met Miracle. She's the one in the cage. She had been in that cage for six to eight years. They had put her in there as a cub and closed the door, and that was that. That's where she lived. And you can see she's surrounded by bars. She can't stand up straight in here. And this is, she's arrived at the sanctuary. I love this picture because you can see where she's lived her whole life and you can see where she's going to spend the rest of her life. And that's the sanctuary. That's where the bears go. It's a really, really incredible place. I love them. Everyone should support Animals Asia. <laughs> so here she is. They sedated her. And you can see how awful, the awful condition that her paws are in from standing on bars her whole life. Um, those calluses on her ears and head are from uh, repetitive stress behaviors. She's spent all day rubbing her head against the bars back and forth. So here they are very gently and lovingly removing her from the cage. And you can see how small that cage is with the guy standing in it. Later on, they go into, um, they go into the surgery room. Uh, sometimes they're in there for four or five hours sedated. They have teeth that have been worn down to the nerves, very, very painful from bar biting. They have really painful paws. They often have eye problems. They often need surgery um, 
on their gallbladder. Sometimes they have pieces of like tools that are still stuck in there. Um, so these bears need a lot of work, and then they need a lot of emotional help afterwards. It's a slow transition, moving them like into a bigger room, big room, and then out to the sanctuary with the other bears where they can socialize. You can see the awful shape that her that her paws are in, and the claws are so overgrown. So three years later, <laughs> Miracle was the fattest bear, the, hap <laughs> the happiest bear, the bear that stayed out the longest. She was the badass because they could not get her to go in at night. She was so happy. It was really wonderful to see, like, from having met this really anxious, stressed out bear to this wonderful life that, that she now had here. <laughs> This is like a, apparently it's easier to eat yams with three <laughs> paws. <laughs> uh, and this is the, like an awesome part of my job is the sad stuff. I, it's hard, but then like you guys get to see cute animal pictures <laughs> and how happy they are. Get excited about that. I love this one because it's like he's posing for a, a school picture or like playing this stand up bass or something. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> This is Arcte, and something else that's really cute about bears is that they use the tops of their paws as, um, as a plate. And they have big hammocks to lie in all day. It's funny because when they go out in the morning, sometimes they, they run for the nearest hammock, and then they fight for who gets to be in the hammock. And this is Llama, the sun bear, looking very, very sad. But he's not sad. He just looks that way. <laughs> Here's one of those trick photos, actually. This, um, this is a rescued sun bear, and um, he is out of sanctuary right now. It looks you know, like a crappy situation, but he's, he's out of sanctuary. Like Ron, who didn't want to go out into the sanctuary, he was like that. He wanted to just be where the people were, and he's a really, really happy bear now. He plays with his toys all day, and he loves being around humans. Um, and in this picture, he's looking like that because he's begging for pineapple jam. It's his favorite treat. Um, what was incredible about meeting this guy is, um, is that he was so forgiving of us and loving towards humans, even though he'd had both of his paws cut off for bear paw soup. So when, when these animals start producing lower quality bile in Vietnam, sometimes they will cut their legs off and just further abuse them by making this bear paw soup, which is a delicacy. So he was missing both of his front paws, but he was still just like so wonderful, and I stepped too close to the cage, bad me, and I was taking his picture, but he actually really quickly grabbed me and pulled me into a bear hug. <laughs> and he could have destroyed me, he could have like bitten me in a second and that'd be over, but he really just wanted to play. And it really, really moved me, and just to see the forgiveness that these animals can have, he was, he was one of the guys who just like, you know, in that moment I said, okay, I will forever work for you guys because you're so amazing. Um, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, 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 it is. Um, some, someone um, in New York City, an artist in New York City, overheard me talking about that story, about the pineapple jam and the paws. Um, she heard that in a, an, in an interview that I did, and she actually made this, which made me ball my face off. Um, so it's a, it was her interpretation of, uh, of my story. <laughs> Can everyone read that? So sweet. And so she um, she sells this um, this print as and the money that she makes from it goes back to I think Animals Asia. So it's really cool to see people doing that. 